If you've got a custom RC crawler, you probably have a combination of parts from different manufacturers and they often don't work perfectly together. Here's the correct way to set up your steering servo arm for ideal sensitivity and driving feel. Your servo is converting rotational motion into linear motion and then back to rotational motion at the knuckle. Let's set a baseline diagram like this. 20 degrees equal rotational increments. As the servo rotates, the horizontal linear distance decreases, even though the servo arm is moving at equal increments. Mechanically, the steering starts off fast and then slows down. You can often use Expo to digitally balance the speed if you like. Your goal is to have equal feel and sensitivity left and right. The best way to do this is to have the steering link or the drag link at 90 degrees to the servo arm when you're in the neutral position or the straight ahead steering position. However, that may not always be possible. If your steering link is coming off at an angle other than 90 degrees, here's what happens. If you have an equal servo throw in each direction, the linear distance will not be equal left to right. The orange side is moving farther, so it has to move linearly faster than the blue side, even though the servo is moving at the same speed in both directions. If you match the linear throw equal in both directions, you have the same problem. The servo has to rotate farther and therefore will feel slower. It should be clear now why the best way to balance speed and distance left and right is to have the drag link at 90 degrees in the neutral position. You might be thinking, could I correct the angle of the drag link with offset rod ends so my steering rod is at 90 degrees. This puts the link visually at 90 degrees. But the answer is no because you have to look at what's called the line of action. The forces acting from rod end to rod end are still not at 90 degrees if you draw a line through the balls. It doesn't matter how you connect them or how you get there, the motion and the forces pass through these two points. Now let's take a look at the full system with the steering knuckle. Your tie rod, the long rod that connects the left and the right wheels, is not at 90 degrees to the steering knuckles. That's to achieve what's called Ackerman steering. The left and right wheels steer at different rates and different angles. This is why. Here's a quick picture of what Ackerman steering means. This will be a topic for another video. What you need to know today is that the offset at the steering knuckle is designed so that the left wheel and the right wheels turn at different rates. That's because your wheels are following different diameters. In a perfect world, your drag link or your steering link would be at 90 degrees to your knuckle. Now this diagram is vastly idealized. Your servo arm and its axis of rotation is likely not anywhere near the same axis as your kingpin and steering knuckle. So this is hypothetical and just to illustrate what you want to aspire to as best you can. Here's a common configuration that bears no resemblance whatsoever to the prior image. Again, here's another theoretical mounting system that would produce a very consistent steering feel. You would have to be able to mount the drag link in a different location from the tie rod, which I know is not an option that I know of. But this would be theoretically ideal. So your drag link may not be perfect relative to the knuckle. So setting this at 90 degrees is about as good as you can get without radically redesigning your servo placement. If you wanted to try to make the feel absolutely perfect in both directions, you could attempt to skew this angle a little bit to try and compensate, but that's going a little too far, even for me. In my opinion, that's not necessary. Just set this at 90 degrees. One more last hypothetical in a perfect world. If your servo arm length and your knuckle length were identical, then you'd have a perfect parallelogram and that would provide a very consistent steering response. Again, not realistic. 
a lot of attention is paid to this on touring cars and racing buggies that have independent front suspension. They have to handle bump steer and high speed sensitivity is a big concern. On a crawler, it's a completely different beast. You would want a perfect parallelogram if that were possible, but I know that's not realistic. Again, just something to aspire to and something to educate. Here are a couple examples of common crawler axle arrangements. Just to give you an idea what you're looking at. This is the 90 degree angle that we're striving for. What's the difference between trim and sub trim? Well, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I can't guarantee that every radio is the same, so check your user's guide. On the radios I'm familiar with, the trim and sub trim are very different. Some people think the difference is simply coarse adjustment versus fine adjustment. This could not be further from the truth, and it could have dire consequences. Let's check it out. Let's use this diagram to signify your steering as it corresponds to the servo. This is your endpoint adjustment. Left and right endpoints are adjustable independently. If your car is hopping while driving at full steer, then you are likely exceeding the U-joint turning capability. Either back off the endpoints until the hop is gone or minimized, or if you want to get crafty, grind some additional clearance into your U-joints but you didn't hear that from me. You'll want to use a small diamond Dremel bit, but you didn't hear that from me. This is your sub trim setting. It shifts the entire range, including the endpoints and the zero center together. Set this first and double check your endpoints anytime you change the sub trim. This is your trim setting. Trim shifts the center zero point in between the endpoints, and the endpoints remain fixed. Only use this to fine tune your car so it drives straight. If you're using your sub trim incorrectly, you may be moving your endpoints inadvertently, which can result in damage to your servo if you're forcing the knuckles lock to lock, or explode your U-joints if they exceed their usable range. If you wanna verify how this works on your rig, Check out this video for more detail on trim. In this example, we have the servo horn set straight down the center line of the vehicle, and that results in about a 100 degree angle to the steering knuckle. And as you can see, it takes about a setting of 80 to the right and 62 to the left in order to have equal turning on both wheels. In this example, I've got the servo horn and the drag link set pretty close to 90 degrees. Not, not quite perfect, but look how close the uh, steering endpoints are now left and right. Down to 70 and 72. That's about as good as you're going to get it. Now, let me walk you through my recommended setup process. Completely zero out the trim and the sub trim. Set your endpoints safely inboard of the eventual full turning positions. This is just temporary. Pick the servo arm spline location that is closest to 90 degrees. On a 25 tooth servo, your options will be roughly every 14 degrees. Adjust the sub trim so your drag link is perfectly at 90 degrees. Then adjust the drag link length so the wheels are straight. Reset the endpoints to the maximum position you want to run. Remember, don't go lock to lock. Stop short and leave a little wiggle room. They won't be perfect left and right, but it should be very close if you've done the prior steps correctly. Don't touch the sub trim after you've set the final endpoints. You could damage your servo or U joints if you inadvertently turn too much. Now go out and drive, fine tune the trim so that the car follows a straight line. You can safely adjust the trim and you won't oversteer your endpoints. If your steering will not return to center, here are some things to look at. Often something has come loose. Link bolts, servo mounts, servo arm screw. The second possibility if your steering doesn't return to zero is something got bent or tweaked in a crash. You may have damaged servo gears with missing or skipping teeth 
or a low quality servo with a less accurate encoder. So what did we learn? Set your steering link at 90 degrees to the servo arm. Sub trim and trim are different. It may not be perfect coming off the knuckle and that's okay. Get as close as you can. Now go get your steering straightened out.